Hello all, welcome to this module. In today's module, we will discuss degree adverbs. So let us start with the question, what are degree adverbs? So degree adverbs are used before adjectives, verbs or other adverbs to give information about the extent or degree of something. For example, you know I am saying they are sad, and then I am saying they are extremely sad. Do you think there is a difference between these two sentences? If so, then I must say that you felt that because of this word extremely. That is the only difference between sentence 1 and sentence 2. So the word extremely makes all the difference, right? This extremely actually uh, talks about the degree of something and in this case it is the degree of sadness. There is a greater degree of sadness and therefore the word extremely is the degree adverb. Now there are other degree adverbs as well. Let us check them out. I, I hate the smell of cigars. I really hate the smell of cigars. What is the degree adverb here? It is really. Because with the word really he is he is trying to express a greater degree of hatred that he has for the smell of cigars. She is always late, she is almost always late. What is the function of almost here? Degree adverb. So there are uh, quite a few degree adverbs, they are completely fair quite, rather, slightly, too, totally, very much, very, etc. He was completely blank, he was fairly good, it is quite dark. So you must have um, used these words in different sentences and these words are degree adverbs because they give information about the extent or degree of something. Okay. Let us check the use of very and to. These are two adverbs or degree adverbs that are often mixed up in sentences. Uh, they are often used interchangeably. Um, it is okay to use them interchangeably in a lot of context, but um, if, if you want to improve your language and take it to a different level or now that we are, we are looking at advanced English uh, grammar. Let us check um, the accurate use of very and to in sentences. So before an adjective or adverb, you we use very to um, refer to a high degree and to when we mean more than enough or more than what is wanted or needed. So to has a higher degree than that of very. Let us check the use of to and very with these two examples. The weather is very hot in Chennai, it is perfect for swimming. So here very is more appropriate than to. The weather was too hot in Chennai, it is perfect for swimming. Is It sounds okay, it is grammatically right. but the sentence would sound better if you say or you would be more accurate if you say the weather is very hot in Chennai or the weather was very hot in Chennai, it was perfect for swimming. Now let us check the second sentence, it is too hot to stay in this room, let us find somewhere cooler. So here someone is saying that it is unbearably hot and therefore let us find a different room and to to refer to that unbearable heat, the person has used the degree adverb to. So rather than saying very here, uh, the use of to should be preferred. Okay? So I hope I made that clear. In formal spoken English, particularly in negative sentences, we can sometimes use to to mean roughly the same as very. For example, I am not too bothered about who fails or it is also okay to say I am not very bothered about who fails. Um, it is 
not very warm today, is it? It is not very warm today. It is not too warm today, is it? So, both are fine because we are using it in an informal context. Um, but there are certain sentences where only one of these two words would fit in appropriately. Now, let us check the use of very and very much. Can we use them interchangeably in all sentences? No. You could use very and very much interchangeably in certain context, in certain sentences, but not in every sentence. And there are certain sentences that take only very and not very much, and there are senti certain sentences um, that takes very much and not very. So, we will check uh, what kind of sentences those are, what kind of um, words uh, those sentences are composed of. Um, so, we do not use very before verbs, but we can use very much before some verbs to emphasize how we feel about things. For example, I very much agree with your decision. So, here agree is a verb and what I am using is very much and not very. I very much agree with your decision. So, it is not right to use I very agree with your decision. So, that is what this point states, okay, that we do not use very before verbs, but we use very much before some verbs, not again, not all verbs, uh, some verbs to emphasize how we feel about things. I was very much happy. I very happy does not make uh, sense, right? Okay. Another example is, we very much enjoyed having you stay with us. Similarly, to substantiate the point that very much does not go with all verbs, uh, I will give you an example. Um, I very much ate pizza, does not make sense, right? So, let us remember the first rule that we do not use very in before verbs, um, but certain verbs allow uh, the combination of very much that is before it. Now, there are certain verbs like agree, doubt, fear, hope, like, want, admire, appreciate, enjoy and regret that um, allows the use of very much before it, such as I very much agree, I very much doubt, I very much fear, I very much hope, I very much like. So, these are all examples of verbs that allow the use of very much before it. Now, the third point says that we can use very much or much, but not very before the last four verbs, that is admire, appreciate, enjoy regret. I very much admired the dance program, possible. I much enjoyed the, the program, possible. But you cannot say I very enjoyed the program. Now, let us check the fourth point. We can use very, but not very much before participle adjectives. Yes. If you have not learned about participle adjectives so far, it is very simple. Um, you know, those adjectives that usually end with ing and ed um, can be classified in participle adjectives, but that is not a, all about, you know, identifying participle adjectives and this is today's homework. I want you to go and read about participle adjectives. Um, so, in participle adjectives, the you can use very, but not very much. For example, I was very disturbed to hear the news. It is not right to say I was very much disturbed to hear the news. Similarly, it is very disappointing, proper grammatical sentence, but when I say it is very much disappointing, then it is ungrammatical. That is because disappointing, disturbed, these are all words uh, that can be classified under participle adjectives. Again, I am asking you to go back um, to your lessons um, that has taught you 
um, participle adjectives. If not, I would ask you to Google and read about it. And if you have any queries with that, do post your queries in the discussion forum or um, come in the live session, um, participate in the live session and we will clear your doubt. Now let's check the next point. We can say very much and not very before a past participle which is part of a passive. For example, the new highway was very much needed. So you shouldn't be saying the new highway was very needed. That would be grammatically incorrect. So I hope you remember the lessons um, on active and passive sentences. If not, add this um, also to your homework along with participle adjectives. Now let us check the use of extremely, very, absolutely and completely. So we use extremely and very with gradable adjectives and absolutely and completely with non-gradable adjectives. Now you may ask, what is a gradable adjective or what is a non-gradable adjective? Well, most adjectives are gradable and when I say that uh, a word is a gradable adjective, I mean to say that we can have different levels of that quali qu quality. For example, when I take the quality cold, you know, I could say it is very cold, it is extremely cold, it is a bit cold. So, we can make the word cold weaker or stronger with the use of modifiers, right? So, all such words fall under the category of gradable adjectives. Now, there are non-gradable adjectives as well and one example would be the word finished. So, if I say it is a finished project, the word finished there works as an adjective and that is a non-gradable adjective because if I say something is finished, it is done. There is nothing called it is a bit finished or it is completely finished, right? So, so to such words, you cannot add modifiers. Now, let us check the use of extremely with gradable adjective. Extremely does not go very well with non-gradable adjectives, but there are exceptions. So, here let us check the use of extremely with gradable adjective. So, you could say extremely effective, extremely difficult, extremely hard. So, this kind of word combination is called collocation. I am sure you must have come across this term in previous modules. So, these are collocations with adverbs, okay. And uh, what kind of adverbs are we discussing today? We are looking at degree adverbs. So, we are looking at collocation with degree adverbs. Now, hugely plus gradable adjective. What are the adjectives that goes with hugely? It was hugely entertaining, it was hugely successful. Um, so, rather than saying that the movie was absolutely successful, it is better you say the movie was hugely successful. Um, similarly, rather than saying that it is, um, you know, um, simply hard, you could say it is extremely hard. You know, that is a better way of uh, collocating the word uh, extremely with hard or that is a better way of using hard. Now, let us check uh, the, the third point which is absolutely plus non-gradable adjective which is absolutely clear, absolutely sure. Similarly, it is simply awful, simply terrible because simply goes with non-gradable adjective. Now, let us check the use of quite. Quite has two meanings. One is to talk about a particular degree, but not very. So, you could say, uh, yeah, it was quite okay, which means it was very okay, fairly okay, you know. Um, 
the second use is to focus or to emphasize on a large degree or when you want to say it is a lot. Um, so, let us check the example sentences. So, with that you will be clear. I was quite satisfied with the result. So, here you are you are kind of telling that you are quite satisfied. So, when you are saying that you are quite satisfied with the result, you are kind of saying that you know you are fairly satisfied with the result. No, you are quite wrong. So, when I utter a sentence like that, well I am trying to say that you are completely wrong. So, here I am talking about a greater degree or you know um, I am I am telling that you are very much wrong. So, when quite is used with non gradable adjectives, it means completely. Lena is not coming until tomorrow. Are you quite sure? So, here I am asking, are you, are, are you totally sure? Are you completely sure that Lena is not coming tomorrow? So, I hope you understood the use of quite in two different contexts. One uh, to talk about a particular degree not very ok and second to talk about a large degree or very much. So, I hope you enjoyed the session. I will meet you with a different topic on a different day. Until then stay safe, take care, bye.